Hey everybody, it's Katie from Bobby Hair Studio. Today I have a really exciting service for you. I am doing like a silvery blonde balayage on Asian hair. A lot of people might find this service intimidating and that's because of naturally dark, coarse hair is sometimes hard to lift to a level 9, 10 in one sitting. But I promise if you follow these tips and tricks and use these techniques, it's not that hard. It's actually pretty easy. It just takes some patience. So this is her after, and if you want to see how I did that, make sure to keep following along and remember to like and subscribe. So we're going to get started with the cut. My client likes to get a cut probably once a year. She likes to chop it just below her collarbone and let it grow all the way throughout the year. Her hair grows beautifully fast, so that's why it's great for her to have a balayage as an option because of that rooted look allows her to have the look that she wants for a really long time without it looking outdated or like it needs to be redone again. She loves to have a fresh start every year, so this was her first time seeing me, and I'm really glad that she wanted to do the chop, because that means that I don't have as much of that old blonde to kind of avoid and work around, or even lighten some of it, and I basically get to use an almost entirely blank canvas. If your clients want a really light color and they have naturally a very dark color, it is best to go for a rooted balayage look so that they get the maintenance and the longevity they want out of their color. Now on to the tools of today's service. I am using Schwarzkopf Blonde Me and 20 volume for the lightener. Because of the level we're starting with, I'm not actually going to be using seven volume as my starting developer and bump it up to 20. I'm gonna start with 20 because we need the strength of the 20. And the way that I'm gonna be foiling today allows for me to do all the foils at once and let them sit until they're all prepared to take out all at once. So you don't actually have to worry about pulling out bottom foils because of how I'm going to be foiling the top of her head. It's something that really helps speeding up the time of the service. You don't have to take valuable time pulling out foils while other foils still haven't gone in. And you can make sure everything's done all at once, which makes sure that you don't have any bleach touching any areas that aren't supposed to be bleached, which causes them to lift to a really orange color. So this is a really great technique. I can't wait to show you guys. I hope you enjoy it. I'm also going to be using my pre-cut foils and my paddleboard today. Now for the sectioning. What I'm doing is I'm sectioning away this top mohawk portion of my client's hair. That's going to be an entirely different foiling style and it's going to process really quickly because of the thinness of the foils. You'll see what I'm talking about later when I go over that area, but essentially what we're doing is we're sectioning our hair into two main sections. The top mohawk and this bottom entire under area. The plan with this is to work in almost like a horseshoe shape and brick lay all the way up towards the mohawk. As I'm doing that, what I'm doing is every section is a slice that's backcombed or a thick chunky weave that's been backcombed. This allows me to get a ton of blonding underneath for some longevity in her color without having to worry about a lot of root because we're intentionally putting a soft heavy root in there. What is a soft, heavy root, you might ask? It's soft in the way where it's blended really nicely, so it has an easy grow out period, but it's heavy because there's no little baby lights to break up that spot. It's actually quite dark and then suddenly quite light, but there is a good blending phase in between those two. So soft and heavy is how I would describe it. I'm brick laying so I don't get any chunky looking pieces. And also what I'm doing is I'm keeping in mind what areas I want to be even blonder areas right around the face and in the temples and at the base of the neck here are going to be all slices where I paint up a lot of lightener up as high as I can while still maintaining a nice blend. While in the back center area of her head, I'm doing a chunky weave to leave out some of those low lights so she has some dimension in her hair. Dimension is a really difficult thing for a lot of new hairdressers to figure out because you have to plan it ahead of time. This foiling pattern that I've done is actually super, super simple. It's easy to understand. There's no crazy shapes involved and it's very easy to customize for your client's needs. One of the reasons why this is a really great pattern is that the underneath gets a lot of heavy blonding, but because it's softly blended, it can grow up for a long time. That way my clients can come in once every six months just to get a half head of foils up on the top half and not have to worry about what's underneath because it still looks quite blonde to them. This is also a really good way to do balayage when you know there's going to be layers in the hair. When you have layered hair, you wanna ensure that you have most of the ends blonded while having your dimension up near the top. If you have too much dimension in the ends and you have layers, then you're gonna have low light sticking through at the ends and it's gonna look like a patchwork of light 
dark and light all over the place. It's gonna look really messy and really weird. So by taking this entire underneath section and painting almost every single hair blonde through the entire ends, you're going to avoid that kind of patchwork look and you're going to give a longer lasting result for your client and it's gonna be lower maintenance and it's gonna have a more powerful impact and it's gonna look really, really beautiful when you have it straight or when you have it curled because you're getting different looks. When the hair is straight, you're gonna get more of that soft balayage blonde look. When the hair is curled, you're gonna get that high impact of the heavy blonde ends and all that dimension up near the top, and it's all gonna to swirl together really beautifully. So this is probably my favorite way to do balayage, and it's super, super simple. You might wanna know why I'm using the paddle for this service. I really, really like using the paddle because I can load some product on underneath of where the hair is and on top. Then I like to take the paddle and kind of glue the hair to it and then lift the paddle up and check underneath to make sure everything's all blended before I lay it down onto a foil. What this does is it uses less product because I'm only putting product on the hair. I'm not putting product all over the foil and it's not sitting on the hair, it's not doing anything. It's just going on the hair and it's fully saturating. Plus, because I have the paddle, I can feel the pressure that I'm using for saturation. So I know all the hairs are getting fully saturated and I'm not worried about slippage with the foil because I haven't started putting the color on on top of the foil and smooshing it all around, maybe shifting the foil. I'm putting all the color on on the hair while it's on the paddle and I'm slipping the foil underneath, setting the hair on top and folding it down. This is a fantastic way to get great saturation, especially for darker hair that needs to lift so many levels. The secret to lifting dark hair to very light in one session is patience you need to take a long time doing the foiling because then you won't have to wait that long for the processing and you won't have to reapply. Let's be honest, reapplication is a pain in the butt. You can miss some of those hairs that you need to reapply on and some of those other areas might break. You don't want that to happen. So if you put it on in very thin, tiny sections, then you're getting great saturation and good insulation and the product is working its way through and it's not running out of steam by the time it gets to that middle section of the hair that's been maybe not so well saturated. I am truly getting the full power of the nine level lift in the Blonde Me and 20 volume here, doing it this way. What I also like is that because I am using a foil, it's insulating and keeping the heat in there and making sure that the foil doesn't dry out. Always make sure to change your bowl out every 20 minutes for a new bowl of lightener because that lightener is processing in the bowl whether it's touching hair or not. So it's losing its power as every minute goes by. You need fresh, fresh lightener for every section that you do, otherwise you're going to end up with areas that aren't as light as others. Really hate to tell you this, but it does happen on this service today, and I'm going to share something with you guys about that later. It's called Two Stars and a Wish. I'm gonna be very open with you, and I really hope you guys can understand that hair isn't perfect. This is something that we work at, and I'm still trying to get better every day. Because she is a first time client, I do want to see how fast her hair naturally wants to lift. And because we haven't even started the second section, I need time. So I check these foils and they're going exactly at the pace I want them to. They're in orange right now, which means they're like a level six or seven. They have a few more levels to lift. Now we're ready to get into the top section. This is the Mohawk section and it's all getting done the same way. What I also did here in the beginning was I split the front of the Mohawk and I set it on top of either side. What that's going to do is keep each side warm and insulated because I don't want to expose those foils to the cold air and have them slow down. While those hairs sit on top of those foils, I'm working on the back. And what I do when I'm top foiling is I like to take very thin skinny sections and to create some dimension, I'm weaving every piece. I'm not doing any back combing. I'm not slicing everything. I'm actually leaving out pieces in every single foil. I'm trying to feather up towards the scalp so I don't get some really harsh lines, but I know because I'm going to be doing a root smudge that's close to the color of her root anyways, that those lines aren't really gonna matter. Doing a standard highlight service on the Mohawk actually is a lot faster than doing a balayage. 
it gets in a lot of saturation and if you're doing skinny pieces it's going to lift super super fast and the reason of that being is that all of these foils because they're super skinny and they're laying on top of each other versus the other ones are draping over each other these ones are going to heat up fast because it's at the top of the head and all that heat from the head is rising upwards and it's going to insulate these foils super super quickly these ones lift like lightning they lift so fast and so that's why i'm not worried about the underneath processing too quickly leaving out pieces is very important because that creates that soft dimension from her roots down to her ends now with the underneath section how i did almost every single hair had super solid blonde ends and was really solid up till about halfway through the hair and then it blended out this is different this is where i'm putting in highlights and those little low light pieces there's a lot more of that left out of the foil than there is underneath and that sounds like it's almost backwards but when you see the result you can see why i did it that way if there's any layers the ends of these dark pieces just tend to blend down towards the blonde and create that soft ombre effect from dark to light underneath i did a mixture of large slices or very thick weaves and what I'm doing up here is I'm doing a few of these thicker weaves to give those PC blonde pieces that she can just kind of like pick out and they add some contrast and dimension. But I'm only doing one of those every few foils. Most of the other foils are more of a medium weave. I'm not really doing any baby lights because the baby lights are just gonna blend right into the hair anyways. I want to create some contrast and dimension still. My foils tend to get a little chunkier as I go towards the front because then we have this soft teardrop shape in the back of the head that creates a softer grow out phase for that swirl that's at the back of everyone's head. And then there's some piecier blonde pieces coming up to the front, which gently blend it into where the money piece is going to be. So at the back, we had more of a medium weave and we slowly went chunkier. And now at the front, what we're doing is the money piece. So I'm doing slices at the front and it's about five or six foils. And I am back combing them just for that softness because at the front, that's where you can see more lines. So of course I do want to blend this out, but this is going to be more solid looking. I'm bleaching the whole strand of the hair and I'm feathering it up towards that back combing. And I'm doing this for five or six foils basically all the way until I run out of hair and there's no more hair. A little hint on how to do money pieces. You want to do more foils in a money piece if there's going to be heavy blonding done in the hair. So I mean, you want like a bigger, chunkier section of blonde, the more blonde the hair is everywhere else. If you have a lot of brown and you want to do with that high contrast between brown hair with a blonde money piece, make your money piece small. You don't want a big chunk. If you are having tons of foils and there's going to be a lot of blonde in the hair anyways, you want to make that money piece stand out a little bit. So sometimes it does have to be slices and you have to do like five or six foils or even more than that towards the back. It's like a two inch thick section, which can sound like a lot, but if you have so much blonde everywhere else, it's just going to blend in. Here she is all foiled up and processing and processing for her was I think 30 to 40 minutes and then we were fully done and ready to wash her out. Now here she is washed out. She lifted up so beautifully. You can see those little bits of stronger yellow tones are the pieces that I had dropped out. They were her old blonde pieces and you can see how much lighter the blonde me lifted her. It lifted her to a beautiful level nine and a half, ten. She's a little bit more yellowy in there because she has some more melanin in her hair than people who have naturally lighter hair, but it's not a problem for toning. The way I problem solve for toning with naturally a lot of yellow or orange tones in the hair is I sometimes do a pre-tone and then I do the root smudge and then I do the like settling in tone. And what I did for the pre-tone today was only ashy colors. I did nine and a half, two, one, eight, one, nine, and six volume. And what I'm doing is I'm putting that on first because I want it to cancel out the yellow and orange tones in her hair. And while that's on, it's going to dilute the root smudge color that I put on and the root smudge is going to blend between these two colors. And I'm so excited for you guys to see how beautifully it blends. I didn't film that because my phone died, but here is the root smudge formula. It's a 413, a 616 and six volume. If you want to see more on how I do a root smudge, make sure to watch my video called how to mushroom bronze and root shadows, because I go into more depth on how I do my root shadowing. My second toner today was 9521811 
nine one and six volume so again only ashy tones and that was more to just settle in the ashy tones that i had put in before kind of correct any warm tones that had still been left behind and just really hammer in that silvery blonde as you can see her hair is like a beautiful ashy blonde it is so light it's honestly like a level nine and i know my camera doesn't even do it justice but i want you guys to see what it looks like wet and then i'm going to dry it up and you can see also, please take note of that little highlight I'm showing you right there, the warm one. I'm gonna address that later. So this is her hair straight. It is so gorgeous. She's got that blonde impact, but it's still very soft because of the root shadowing and it's super dimensional because of the highlight service that I did up on the mohawk. It looks very different from when it's curled because look at how much more of the dimension you see when it's curled. You see those little low lights that are left out below and you see a little bit more of that dimension and softness between the two colors rather than just seeing the top layer sit on top of the bottom. Now is the time where I'm gonna go over something that I just am a little nervous to do because I know the internet can be a very critical place. This is extremely important for me to share with you guys because it's what made me a stylist that is able to take criticism and it made me the stylist that I am today. This is called Two Stars and a Wish and I'm going to do it publicly and I hope you guys respect that. Two stars are two affirmations that I did well in the service, and one wish is something that I could do better. Not something I sucked at or I hated, something I can do better on. My first star is I'm really happy with the blending of this service in particular. The way that the foiling was done and the root toner added such a soft blend to her hair that she's going to be able to wear this for a long time. My second star is I'm really proud of myself for how high I was able to lift her hair. I think it's beautiful, it's still healthy, and it's exactly what she wanted. My wish is that I wish I had changed out one of my bleach bowls a little bit sooner when I got to the right side of her head because what ended up happening is that one of those foils ended up, I guess not processing all the way to its full extent because it had probably been sitting for a few minutes too long with that bleach in the bowl. So this one side looks beautiful. It's beautiful level nine, but then over onto the other side, you're gonna see this one or two foils that just didn't lift up quite as much. And so they still have a tiny bit of warmth to them that I'm just nitpicky about, but I really didn't like that. So my wish is that I had switched out that bowl sooner because then I wouldn't have that area to kind of fight with. But other than that, I'm really happy with this. I hope you guys enjoyed this video and I hope you learned something from it. Have a great night. Remember to like and subscribe and follow us on Instagram at Bobby Hair Studio.